Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to add transition between scenes together with a simple fade effect in Godot. I've created a couple of level scenes already, level 1 and level 2. Both of them have the player, which is a character body 2D, and level 1 also has this area 2D node, which is my exit. What's inside of these levels doesn't really matter. What's important is how we're going to change between the levels and how we're going to add a fade effect. So over here, I've got my main scene and I have level one as a child. There is a simple script attached to it. All it does is checks when the player goes to the exit and it's going to print out level complete. If I run this as it is and I move the player over to the exit, I just get level complete printing out. The fade itself is going to happen on another layer. So we're going to add a child node, which is going to be the canvas layer. I will then rename this to fade. I will add another child node, which will be color rect. And this is actually what's going to do the fade. And the first thing to do is take this small white rectangle and make sure that it fills the entire screen. I then change the color to whatever I want to fade to, which in my case is just a fade to black. The actual fade effect is really simple. It's done by adjusting the alpha, which is the transparency of this rectangle. So as I move this to the left, we fade in. And I move it to the right, we fade out. What I need to do is add a function that's going to do that automatically. So let's first of all save this as a scene of its own by selecting Save Branches Scene and I'll save it inside my scenes folder. I'll go into that scene and add a script at the top. I don't need a process function, so that goes. What I do need to do is drag across this color rect so that I can reference it inside of my code. So I'll hold control and release it, which assigns the color rect variable. Now, if I want to change anything like that transparency value, I can access this node using this variable here. The first thing I wanna do is make sure that this is fully transparent when the game begins. Otherwise, I'm going to just have a black rectangle over the whole thing. So inside of my ready function, I take this color rect variable and I access the color property and then specifically dot A. And I set that to 0, 0.0. So now, even though I still have this black rectangle, if I run the game, it's fully transparent, which means that I can see my game as normal. After that, I can create a new function called fade. This function will fade in and out, which means that I need to be able to tell it which direction to go in. So it's either going to go to no transparency or full transparency. To do that, I'll define an argument here called target alpha, which is going to be a float, and then a duration, which is basically how long it's going to take for that fade effect to complete. So the longer the duration, the slower the fade, which I will define as a float, and I will give it a starting value of 1.0. So by default, it should take a second to finish. I now need to be able to transition smoothly along this A variable from one end to the other. And I will do that by using a tween. So I create a new tween by saying var tween is equal to create underscore tween. I can then access that tween and I can use it to control the property of that rectangle by saying tween underscore property. The object I want to change is my color rect, which is inside of this variable here. And the property that I want to change is the color and specifically the A property, which is that transparency down here. The next argument is the final value, which is what I want to get to, i.e. my target alpha. And the last argument is the duration, which I've already set as an argument here. And when that's all done, I just need to return the tween from this function. I can test this already. If I head over into my main script, I can call that fade function. But first I need to be able to access that scene, which is inside of my fade node. So I drag this over holding control. This will add the fade variable, which points to the fade node. Now we just take this variable and head into this function. This is where the player goes into the exit. And at the moment, I'm just printing out level complete. So once I print that, I'm going to get that fade node and call the fade function. Inside, I pass in a couple of parameters. So to fade out, I need the rectangle to be fully solid. So the A value goes to one. And for the duration, I'm going to make it take one and a half seconds so that it's quite a slow transition. Now let's test this out, I'll head over here, and now everything fades out. So that worked pretty well, but there is an issue with it right away, which we can see if I print out another statement after it that says faded out. So if I test this now and I head over here, you'll notice that it says faded out immediately, even though it hasn't actually finished the fade effect. I wanna make sure that my fade is fully completed before I move on to the next steps, where I delete the current level and load the next one. Otherwise that will happen while the screen is still fading. The way I can do that is by adding a wait at the beginning and then at the end I can add dot finished. This will work because the fade function returns a tween and a tween has a signal called finished. So when the tween completes, it will trigger this signal and we await for that to happen. Now when I test it, you'll notice a small difference. 
it doesn't say faded out until the fade is completed. So the fade is working pretty well. Now let's fade back in. So I'm just going to copy these lines from above, but this time my target is going to be 0, 0, and it's now going to say faded in. What should happen now is that I fade out initially, I get confirmation, and then I begin the fade back in. So that worked pretty well, but the level didn't change. My level is a child of the main scene. So here is level one, and this is what that level looks like with all of the nodes inside of it. What I need to do once that fade is completed is delete that level. I actually have access to it already. So at the beginning of my code, I define a current level variable, which is null to begin with. But inside of my ready function, I assign level one, which is this node here, into that current level variable, which means that I always have access to this variable and therefore my level one node. So as soon as my fade is completed, I'm going to take my current level and I'm going to say Q underscore free to delete it. If I retest this again, I'm going to go to the exit, everything fades out. And now when we fade back in, there's nothing there. The level is gone. Now we just need to load in the next level. Well, we've got our current level here. So we'll say var next underscore level is equal to preload. And what I want to preload is my level two file, which is down here. So I'm just going to select the scene for level two. Now I can instantiate that level when I'm changing scenes. So down here, I faded out and I've deleted my current level. And immediately after that, I can say new level is equal to my next level variable, which is preloaded. That's my level two scene dot instantiate. That will instantiate the scene, but I need to add it as a child of my main node to replace the level one, which I've just deleted. So we do that by saying add underscore child new level. Now we test this again. I head over to the exit and it says level complete, faded out, and now we fade back in with a new level. And that's how you can add transitions between scenes in Godot with the addition of this nice fade effect. If you found this useful, then leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.